Hello there, and welcome to my beginner's guide for Dwarf Fortress. I'm Icon, and in this one, I'm going to explain everything you need to know to set up a self-sustaining fortress and get ready to explore the rest of the game at your own leisure. We're going to cover a lot of different topics in this one. There's timestamps in the description box below, yet this video will definitely only scrape the surface of things, and its goal is only to get yourself on your feet to explore everything at your own leisure so you are not totally information overloaded. This video will leave you with a fortress which is able to care for itself and do trade, expand and fall into blunder eventually. So with that being said, I have prepared a world which we can use and will use for this video. A quick Thing in between I'd be really delighted if you would check out those support links in the description box there's a couple of ways to support this channel and I'd be really delighted if you check them out a big thanks to all the supporters out there and also don't forget to subscribe so we're playing fortress mode obviously and uh, first off well this is the entire world here in the background I've created before it's an entirely standard world no no, no settings have, have been changed. So first off, you have to select a starting tile. And if you're new to the game, I strongly recommend you to start that tutorial. And maybe you want to play it. It's actually not that bad and quickly over. But most importantly, this one selects a habitable tile for you. So until you know your way around in this game, this is a wonderful way of getting some place to live at, which ain't too hard to settle down. And the tutorial here, you can just click that away and you must click that question mark once. Then you have really good tutorials in here too, which are basically very similar to what I'm explaining in this video. And then you can click away these things and you're ready to settle down. This is by all means a pretty easy start because it's a very, very temperate region and there's everything you need, but for a beginner that's absolutely ideal. Alright, so the next thing that we're seeing here is a couple of things. So first off, quick introduction about what we see here. Up here at the top bar, that's practically everything we got, and the time. So people, how happy they are, our stockpiles. Over here we have our minimap. Down there we have practically everything regarding our society. When you click on in there, you can cycle through the different buttons there and there's really a lot of things to do. We're only skimming that. Down here is the construction menu and here's the military menu and the world map. So you can check on out the world map here as well. And there's a lot of things you can do here too. So, first thing you gotta do when you're uh, settling down is, well, you gotta find some place to live at. Since we're dwarfs, we're not going to live above ground. Technically possible, but not really a feasible thing. So, pick up that mining icon here, and you select first the staircase. So, first off, you left click there, then mouse wheel down, and another left click. And now we have set up a work order for a staircase. So, let's start the time, and our dudes are starting out with that. Space for pausing yet again. Here we have the time thingy and now mouse wheel down and as you see there we're, we're skipping through elevation levels so here we have now our first underground layer now we use the pickaxe i'm drawing a line all over here and i'm going to set up another staircase so left click mouse wheel down left click so here we go that's done mouse wheel down and here we go so I'm doing uh, right another layer here, and that's uh, for defensive purposes. You don't want anybody to be able to run into your fortress that easily. Having a couple of layers in between really helps you out, putting some defensive measures in the long, long run, and it's really hard to fix that if you haven't thought about it in the first place. So now at this level, I want to settle down. So the first thing I'm doing here is I'm setting up a staircase. And as you see here, mining is uh, pretty simple. That's for mining out areas, that's for staircases. And uh, when you press this arrow here, you also get some advanced menus, which are really, really cool. And uh, the most mentionable here is auto mining. When you have that on, your dwarfs will 
click that somewhere, your dwarf will look for valuable things and uh, keep mining them until they find nothing else anymore. Pretty useful thing. I wanted to cover that in the mining uh, tab here as well. There, there's tons of other mini configurations. I have to cut things down in this tutorial if we ever want to squeeze this in in a short amount of time. Okay, so the next thing we're doing here is a little bit of a basic setup. First off, one branch over here. This is going to be where my dwarfs will be living at. Everybody receives a sleeping room in the long run. I'm just setting this up so we have the basics down. Here, one big hole, which will be our central hub for transportation. And then, well, you'll see, we're not really getting things done in, a, in an amount of time that I want to see. So let's get down here in the citizen menu and the labor tab is where we want to be. So here we configure what's everybody working. So as you see there, there's a couple of icons. The jobs here are distributed differently. So there's a couple of jobs like your miners, only selected people will do this. This means only somebody has that icon, he will mine. There's other jobs like planters, which have that check mark on everybody does this. Here you don't need to assign anybody's particular. Here we're going to assign our expedition leader as a second miner can strongly recommend one miner doesn't cut it in the first place because you're setting up a lot of infrastructure at the beginning. The more experienced you are, I guess, the more you set up. So once that's done here, this will be our main entrance hall where we're going to store all that stuff which our expedition has brought. Right now we have a lot of things on the wagon and uh, we can't really uh, store them anywhere. It's really important to get things stored as quick as possible because they get stolen by predators and other uh, nasty things. So the first thing we want to do, we want to establish a stockpile here. So I'm clicking this thing here and that one. And now we can drag and drop a rectangle over there. So this is our first stockpile zone. You see those red marks. And here we configure what should be stored in there. I want to be stored everything in here. See, there's a lot of categories and there's also a button to customize that. So one day you will want to customize your tabs, but before you get that deep, usually those categories are all you require. So if you want to expand that thing, you click here and then you click into the existing stockpile zone and then you get that uh, brush icon, repaint, and then we can just drag and drop and expand that accordingly. So it does take a moment for them to finish that. I just want to add in some space to uh, stuff that stuff down so the people up there are not going to just twiddle their thumbs. So that's how the basic stockpiling works. You can, of course, configure stockpiles a little bit more in detail. I'll show that in the, in the course of this tutorial as well. So the next thing we have to do now is, of course, we have here a region where our dudes will live at, but at the end of the day, we are dwarves and we want to keep it working. So the next thing we're going to tackle are the basic workshops. So workshops will be drawn here into this direction, into this direction, and into this direction. So, next thing I'm doing is a three on three room. So, we have every workshop in a separate room. That's pretty useful if you ever need to lock somebody in a workshop. Sometimes that's a necessary thing. Don't want to spoil anything, but I can just say it's a good thing to organize your workshops like that. And as you see, the our dwarfs are going ham on that. So, we're uh, putting down lots of chambers here, and yes, we're going to use most of them. Dwarf Fortress is insanely detailed, and uh, that's one of the wonderful things about it. Okay, so we got that, and now we can select our first workshops to be placed down. For that, we get into that menu here, Workshops, and the first thing that I want to set up is a carpenter, because that's where our wood will be processed at. Also, our stockpile zone can be expanded. Use stockpile, and that's another nifty way to access the expansion. Just to show you several access, uh, access tools. And uh, with the carpenter comes at the same time for me, the stone worker. Let's uh, put down the other workshops over there. So as you see there, we have in the workshop selection, I don't want to skip on that, or the next one I want to put up. 
let's put up the still next um over here i have the check mark on use closest material and keep building after placement this is really nifty so you don't get kicked out of the placement menu and uh here well this depends on whether you want to choose how your stuff looks or if you want to conserve certain materials or not use closest material makes things as easy as possible you know there we go so the still that's where we produce our drinks at really important especially for dwarven folks as you all might know and uh, we're going to expand this into another large hall. There we go. So the plan is that this hall will ultimately contain more rocks and boulders and the stuff the stone worker will work with to introduce you some basic organi organization there with the wood shops. This is just a very, very basic setup and you can't do it on your, as you see, fit on... You know, there, there's just so many ways to solve the same problem in this game. That's wonderful. Just want to introduce the proper tools. So another important workshop re really early on is the fishery. Unlike you would expect in the first place, this is where your raw fish gets processed at. Raw fish is uh, nothing your, your dwarves really want to eat. And at the fishery, the fish items will be processed properly. Okay, we have the chambers together. Another thing that I'm uh, going to set up here, and that's just to go over the base, the most basic uh, workshops to complete that tour. Over here in the furnaces area, a wood furnace is really useful. This is where you can kickstart your smelting. And uh, while we're talking about smelting, we put that smelter over here. So I put the smelter and the stone worker together because the rocks and boulders and the ores they will be dumped together in that room that's pretty pretty comfortable okay so another really important thing that we are going to set on up is the crafts dwarf the crafts dwarf processes all manner of different things he processes uh, mostly items into trade goods that's the that's the general purpose of the crafts dwarf and it's really useful to have that guy working for you Next thing on our list, the smith, metalsmith. And uh, here we're going to set that up to process the metal we got there. And let's check it out. I think we are pretty much done with the most basics. There are tons of other work uh, workshops here, but most of them are more specialized. Just want to check out if I haven't forgotten anything could happen quite easily you you know skipping the kitchen right now is actually something i do on purpose don't uh, think that i am actually forgetting anything so yes yes that's uh, where we're going to leave the workshop area so that's the basic setups i'm going to explain how we use the workshops in a second when we're going to craft our first furniture for our rooms but the next thing i want to cover is farming and how we produce our food in general here's the thing about dwarves dwarves are a little bit special they don't really need that much food so the food tab is actually misleading you know we're dwarves do you know what dwarves really need booze so drink is the actual it's actually way more important than food it's also way easier to keep your food meter up while it's a lot more work to keep your drink happening so what i'm doing over here is i dig a, another cavern into the sandy soil to do farming you cannot do this on on cavern floor you'll need either sand or loam or or something like that the farms also tell you if or not, if you can or can't place down uh, the plots on the specific ground so for example let's go on over here i can't place it down here on the cavern floor it doesn't work if i browse up here I can't place it down. So if you are wondering whether or not you are at the right spot, simply said, if you can place it down, you've hit the right spot. What's also really important is underground farms shall not receive any daylight ever. So don't dig a hole up there now accidentally because that would ruin it all. So when we have set up our first farm plot, we're clicking that. And here we have four different seasons. 
There's different things you can grow every season and every crop has its own different uses. But as a beginner, we're plumping, we're, we're, we're planting plump helmets. We're plumping, yeah, exactly. We're, we're just planting those plump helmets because these can be eaten and processed into booze. So that's just brilliant. So the thing is, Planting down all the other things isn't anything I'd recommend to a beginner in the game out of the simple reason you've got to know your way around to actually know what you're doing with these. The plump helmets, they, they, they have their clear purpose. As you see there now, our farmers are dumping these spawns on that and they'll grow now into those uh, mushrooms over the course of the time. Okay, that's how we prepare the mushrooms and when we get on over to the still, you click that and this is our first workshop that we're going to use so add new task and as you see there we can do different things but we cannot brew anything because we have no empty food storage items so what are empty what are food storage items either barrels or pots barrels are made at the carpenter's workshop you add a new task and uh, you have here all manner of different things i strongly recommend if you know what you're looking for just type it on over there and <coughs> That's some messages about what we found there. And now we're creating yet a, we're, we're trying to create a barrel, but we cannot because we have no wood. So to chop ourselves some wood, we can go here and we can just click that here and we chop some trees with doing that. Tree chopping is kind of dangerous. Sometimes bad things happen to your dwarves. And uh, the easy way to prevent that is to just uh, go over to your wagon Click that thing and remove it. This way, you can get some starting, uh, some starting wood. Especially useful if you have almost no wood in your starting biome. The starting area here provides some wood always. All right. So with that, we have we can now add barrels, but we can also add beds. So because these are important for the next chapter, I'm going to do that. And over here at the Stoneworkers Workshop. We sadly cannot make any pots, you would assume, but no. That's one thing you gotta get used to. Things are, sometimes you have to search them. No, the Crafts Dwarf is making them. You get on over there, go into the rock section, and uh, the rock pot. The rock pot is technically the same as a, as a barrel. So let's set up a specialized stockpile while we're at it. Here, we accept that and this is going to be where our stone is being stored at so all the workshops here work basically like you saw there you set up a a water then the dwarfs walks over there brings the stuff crafts the item and once they're done with the orders they're uh, they're doing whatever they're doing there so with these tasks you can also set it to repeat indefinitely this way they'll do it until they run out of material and uh, here you can also prioritize it or pause it there's a lot of uh, there's a couple of things how you can manage that but the most convenient way of managing your stuff we're going to introduce that in the work orders chapter but one thing after another so once you have set up the farm and you have uh, set up a production of barrels or pots you can actually start distilling that stuff. Right now we can't because we obviously still don't have enough uh, items there, so we're, uh, we're probably going to craft ourselves some more pots. But as you can already see, this is quite uh, this is quite tedious. So there is a way to automate these uh, these tasks, and I'm going to introduce that in a moment. First off, I want to talk about rooms and furniture but before we can do we have already made a bed i want to create a door and over here at the stone worker a throne there we go a throne is a little bit of an over exaggeration it's basically just some some sort of very very decorative stool don't think that uh, they will that's too crazy so rooms and furniture first off we have dug out these little chambers then we get into the construction menu and here furniture. So we're selecting a bed. Here I'm selecting this for a little bit of a better oversight, select material after placement. So when I click here, the game is now billing me or asking me what 
bed should I use? We have tea wood beds, two of them, so yes, I want that. With the furniture, it works the same. We could also use the closest material, and it just grabs the very first bed you want to. I just wanted to show you the difference between these two things for once. So we have a bed. Now install that door that we've uh, that we're that we don't have yet. So you saw that there was a uh, a warning over there because the door wasn't done yet. So we have it now. Basically, everything out of the furniture tab has to be produced before you can do anything here. So that's why I put up all the workshops in the first place, because the workshops are actually what you need to get any room furnished in this game, which is actually quite realistic. And realism is quite the shtick of this game. So once the door here is uh, done, this, this doesn't make it a bedroom, though. We have now the furniture of a bedroom, but this ain't a bedroom now. So what we can and should do now next is click on the green icon here with the dwarf face. That's the zone menu. So here you can assign all manner of different rooms and zones. We're looking for the bedroom, and uh, we're, we're tracking and dropping this area here, and boom, bedroom. So this is now when we press accept or first bedroom. And we can now, when we right click, it's gone. So you cannot access those zones and these directly. You have to click down here to see those zones yet again. So when you click that bedroom now, you can select it. Let's create another one. You can also check mark multi here and then uh, see bed rejected, not enclosed. You cannot create a bedroom if there is no door. That's why we make those doors and uh, keep in mind many things can be made at very different uh, out of very different materials so we can make a rock door we can also make a metal door and use your imagination there's uh, quite a lot of things and oh forgive me folks i have forgotten one workshop but it's it's optional the jeweler well, it's, it ain't optional but it's really good for trades sorry for forgetting that one so we have another door and we can now set that up and once that's set up, we can make that a room. So let's make ourselves a, uh, another door here. And then let's talk about how to assign these rooms. So when you click this, there's this little button for assigning a dwarf. And there we go. So now this bedroom is assigned to this, uh, to this fella. And this provides some, some, some happiness to them. To make a bedroom complete, they want to have a chest, you can make a chest, or you can make a coffer. I think coffers are made at this. Ah, shortcuts are killing me. Yeah, rock coffer. So coffers are basically rock chests while carpenters make chests. So if you put a chest in there, it's basically the, that's basically everything the, the bedroom requires to work properly. Of course, you can beautify it. You can go on over here and go to wall smoothing and uh, make it uh, even more beautiful this way. There's a couple of things that you can do. So next off, we're going to talk about another thing that closes off rooms and furniture. It, it works basically the same with all the rooms. When you go for a dining room, there's uh, usually all, always a, a hint in the tooltips what kind of furniture is required. So here at the dining hall, tables and adjacent chairs should be included. You always get a bit of a pointer what you require. But the next thing that I want to talk about, which is really important, are the nobles and administrators. So when we get on over here into the citizen menu, nobles and administrators. So <clears throat> we start out with the expedition leader. And as you see here, this is the requirements. He has now meager quarters. And here's a couple of uh, other jobs that are really important. We are going to get on over to the manager first. The manager is really important. All the other dudes are cool too. To give you a brief overview, the manager is opening the work orders and the militia commander is what you need for your armies. And the bookkeeper will keep you a, will keep close track of your stockpiles because you are not seeing your entire stockpiles without a bookkeeper broker is your trader and all the other stuff well tons of details but the most important thing is to understand how to set up these guys 
and then there's a lot of dudes that unlock new features for your fortress. So we're going to make the manager work for us. So plus sign, you have to find somebody. The wonderful thing is that you always get a uh, recommendation there. So he's going to be the expedition leader and the manager for now. We're going to set up somebody else, but I want to pick up somebody with a decent skill. As you see here, he's an adequate organizer, and the other peoples are, people are not. You can't always set up somebody without skills. He learned that over time. So as you see here, right check mark because there's no study. To set up a study, you need not much. You need merely a throne. Remember that one, found under the chairs menu, and uh, a bear, another door. And that's the very, very rough basics of a study. That's all the study does require here. Let's wait until the drone has been transported on over there. Oh, it is already, no? There we go. All right, and now we already know how that works. We need the office here. That's actually the uh, study. And then we put that up, done. And now just like the apartment here, we click that and we assign that to our expedition leader and now he has a study and he's able to do his job and that's the basics about that. I want to talk a little bit more about zones now before we get on over to the last chapter of this video. So in the zones there's a lot of other things that you can set up. That's not only the rooms to set up, that's also really useful things that I want to introduce here. The most important one, the pen, this is uh, really, really uh, important. You put that up here and then you can put your animals in there because actually every fortress starts with a lot of animals under the control. So you can just put them in there. I strongly recommend you not to uh, put the dogs and the cats into the pen because the cats hunt vermin and the dogs help wherever they can. I'm not so fond of the dogs, but I'm very, very fond of the cats. And the other animals they are supposed to be there that's important because this way they have a place to eat and of course at some point you should consider defending that thing there's constructions uh, that you can do by the way here you find all the different floors and walls and all and whatnot of course there's a lot of things to do this is just for the mechanics so to say and also quite a useful thing to set up is a garbage dump so your folks get a get a place where they can dump their really nasty refuse at and also worthwhile things you can set up a zone where fishing should happen you can also set up a zone where animal training should happen where sand and clay should be gathered because you can use that for all manner of different industries and yeah that's that's pretty much all i wanted to say about that menu here it's not only rooms it's also outside zones and the pen is one very very mandatory one another very uh, mandatory one is also the meet meeting area but we're not going to set that up here basically you can you already get the idea this is where you organize your city at good old next and last thing that i want to cover are the work orders the work orders are basically allowing you to automate things because nobody wants to make this manually all day, right? That's why I set up the manager first. When you click at the work orders uh, tab, once you have a manager, it doesn't work without a manager, you can click here. And now we're going to say at the carpenter's workshop, I want to make beds. So here you get a pretty obscure readout, but we're going to configure this by clicking at this green icon here. And this allows us now to, to configure this thing accordingly. So I want to be I want to fire this uh, this order off whenever the amount of beds available is below, or wait a sec, is less than three. So whenever we have less than three beds, we're going to make beds. So right click that, but we also, we not necessarily want to make three beds, we just make one. So what this now does is whenever we have less than three beds, this rule will automatically fire up, they are checked daily, and then they'll make another bed. And that's how it works. You can make that for basically everything. So same thing here. If we want to make, let's say, 
Oh yeah, here, barrels. It's a very, very good example too. Let's get on over for the barrels. So, of course, this is again just the basics about that system. You can do much more than I do here, but uh, you get the idea. So, amount of empty barrels. They have always really, really smart suggestions down here. So, amount of empty barrels is less than three. Then we can produce another barrel. And this way, your folks will produce whatever they are supposed to do for a longer period of time. So that's how you set up work orders. So another last thing that I kind of like wanted to explain but somehow forgot, rock blocks. Rock blocks are something that are really important because basically every rock here can be cut into stone. And uh, it's really worthwhile to set up your stone worker for that. Either you go for an indefinite task or you, uh, you can go for work orders and configure this to some way that pleases you. So amount of rock blocks available is less than 10, then they start doing this. Or we can also change that to exactly 10, not 10, at least 10. So basically you can decide for yourself how you want to fire up those rules. And uh, there's a lot of depth to that, but I hope I managed to catch the basics. So of course, that's just really, really the, the, the surface of this game but it gives you an impression. Basically, your next goal will be to select what's around your base and start trading. So trading, you set on up a trade depot up here. You basically should set up your trade depot one day on the ground because your trade, the traders want to visit your fortress, of course. But for starters, you can set it up above ground. Just wanted to let you know already. And uh, Every year, a trade caravan will arrive at your place. So whatever you find at your biome specifically, you can process. So here, for example, we have Galena, which we can process. Also important to note over here at the labor tab, there's a uh, tab called stone use. And stone use shows you what you can make out of the stuff. There's economic stone, for example, here Galena, it's silver ore and lead ore. And there's uh, everything else, so you can if you don't know what to make out of a stone, you can check it out there. Another really important thing here at the still, brew drink from plants as much as possible. Keep your drink up. Keep, uh, bring up a work order for that as soon as possible because your dwarfs need alcohol as much as possible. You can also gather uh, stuff above ground with the foraging. So here we go. As you see there, there's a lot of stuff now marked there too, which allows you to gather fruit and a lot of other things and I'm leaving you here because we're getting lost in details. This is pretty much in a nutshell how you set up a, a somewhat stable fortress. You will run into problems eventually but what you got here is an indefinite production of drink and food because your fisher works automatically and cuts up food. We have somewhat of a expandable setup where you can now slap up more storage zones, more living areas. You can also start to dig deeper and explore deeper underground. And you can also spread your fortress above several, across several levels. Do whatever you feel like is a great idea. This setup here provides you with all the basics you require to expand. And uh, from that point on, it's up to you what you want to do and where you want to go. And I hope this video was helpful for you. Feel free to drop me a comment down below if you want to add some useful tips, ask some questions, or just lose some words. I always love to hear from you folks. And feel free to leave a thumbs up on that video if you found it helpful. And of course, don't forget subscribing. I do basically daily content and I'd be delighted to have you. See you guys next time and have a wonderful day.